history of horror pictures, nothing so shocking on the screen. <laughs> Corridors of blood. Mr. Bolton, the committee have decided against holding any further demonstrations. I tell you, I must have those chemicals. <laughs> the bargain's a bargain, eh, Doctor? You keep your end of it, and I'll keep mine. Corridors of Blood, starring Boris Karloff, genius or madman? Better St. John, drawn into the deadly vortex. Finley Curry, who believed at first. Christopher Lee, the killer known as Resurrection Joe. Oh, I can't sign that. I don't know how he died. It's a favor for a favor, Doctor. You want your book? Hospitals want bodies. And you take shock after shock after shock. Don't hold in your terror. Shriek if you must. A Nerdorama shocker. This picture is not for timid souls. We're ready for you now, sir. First patient. For your information, gentlemen, this is a straightforward amputation at the lower extremity of the femur. And to you students, again, I emphasize the absolute necessity for speed.
me. You're getting faster all the time. Beats me how you do it. No matter how fast I am, I still can't save them that terrible agony. Yes, most distressing, but alas, inevitable. You can't have operations without screams. Pain on the knife are inseparable. I beg to differ, Mr. Blunt. Someday surgery must and will be made painless. I've got to go. It's getting late. Why don't you go straight home? You've done enough work for one day. I have patients waiting for me. You're not still fooling with that free dispensary of yours in seven dials. I can't understand why a distinguished surgeon of your ability can squander his valuable time prescribing castor oil and stomach pills for a group of miserable wretches. And how else will those miserable wretches, as you call them, get any kind of medical attention? Well, sure, that's a matter for the authorities. True, except that they repudiate the obligation and do nothing. I really think that setting aside one afternoon a week is the very least that I can do. Ah, you're spending more time than that, Bolton. On top of it all, there are your chemical experiments. If I were you, I should tread a little carefully. People are beginning to talk. Well, let them talk. In the meantime, I'll do what I think is right. Goodbye, Father. I'll see you this evening. Oh, yes. Susan's expecting her. Don't be late. Pity your father's so squeamish, Jonathan. That perhaps he's not quite the same with his uh, charity patients. flower selling for a week or two. <coughs> no, sir. I'll <coughs> keep her own. I mean what I say. You keep this child off her feet or she'll be hopping around on a crutch for the rest of her life. Oh, I will, sir. I swear I will. There we are, Eddie. Safe and sound in just a little bit. Use this ointment. See that <coughs> she has a clean bandage every day. God bless you, sir. I'll see she comes to no more harm. <coughs> it's hard enough without the money she brings in. Yes, I suppose it is. Well, if it doesn't heal, come and see me in a week. But don't wait any longer. Here. Take that. Oh, thank you, sir. Good day to you, sir. God bless you again, sir. Bye, Eddie. Ah, it's a good thing you're not gone, Doctor. Oh, Ben, you're way past my time. Now, what do you want? It's a poor fellow over in my lodging house, sir. He's got a fever and he's coughing his heart up, sir. Can't your wife take care of him? Well, she's doing that, sir. But I'm telling you, doctor, he's bad. We thought he'd burst his lungs. Oh, doctor, you must come. All right, I'll come. I can cut through to Oxford Street from your place. That's where my carriage is. Go ahead.
think so. He's coming. Rosa, how often have I told you to keep this door closed? This place must breed a hundred fevers. Yeah, right there, Doctor. <laughs> I furnished it cheap when they pulled down the old smallpox hospital. Where's the patient? He's upstairs. He's on my own bed. This may not be much of a place, Doctor, but we do have consideration for the sick. What's the matter, Doctor? Don't you recognize your own handiwork? <laughs> Came out of the hospital only a week ago. Frightened out of his wits, he was. You fixed him up good, Doctor. Half a leg and half a brain. That's all you've left him with. He's still in a state of shock. They should never have discharged him in this condition. Come on, out of the way, Ned. We've got work up aloft. Ben! Ben! He's dead! He's dead! Oh, easy now, Rachel, <laughs> easy! It's no good, Doctor. He couldn't hold on any longer. The wife upsets very easy, Doctor. Uh, let's go and see for ourselves. Well, give me a light. Close someone will let me see him. What happened? It was an awful coughing fit. And then there was a sound as if his ribs was rattling to pieces. Terribly undernourished. Consumptive, I'd say. Strange. No signs of a hemorrhage. Who is he? A oh, big in letter writer. One of the best. Name is Scrivener Sam. As good a man with a pen as you'd ever see. Is there anyone to bury him? It'll be a pauper's grave, Doctor. But we'll see him to it. But as you know, uh, we got to have a certificate for the authorities. This new act of Parliament, they're very strict, you know. We can't bury him without a proper certificate. I'll make sure that he's laid out nice and proper, Doctor. Yes. See that he gets a decent burial. Needn't worry yourself about that, Doctor. It'll be all above board. Shall I see you out, Doctor? Don't bother. Ben, I warn you, if any of your lodgers are taken ill like that again, get them to the hospital before it's too late. Yes, Doctor. He said, <laughs> he don't know how right he is. <laughs> Joe. I told you he'd sign. No need to get scared. Yeah. If we can do it once, we can do it twice. And more. <laughs> Come on, drink up. To profit and no comeback, eh? <laughs> Right, Governor. None better resurrection. I told you choking had looked natural, didn't I? <laughs> what do you want? Just looking. I've been hearing some strange talk. Well, forget it. Come on. Get back to your room. Joe, you get the tea chest up here. Ned'll get the card. Yeah. The hospital will pay us well for him. <laughs> the body's nice and fresh, and we got evidence that shows as it died all neat and tidy like, eh? <laughs> According to the law. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice body, Governor. You have the death certificate? Signed by Bolton? That's right, Governor. One of his charity patients. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle, you 
you've hardly touched your food. I'm sorry, Susan. I just don't feel like it tonight. You've been working too hard. Susan's right, Father. That dispenser is too much on top of your work in surgery. You can't do both. Maybe I should give up surgery. How can you say that? You're the finest surgeon in the hospital. Oh? What is a surgeon? How do you judge his work? It's to cure, isn't it? Sometimes I wonder. What are you getting at? Today, in Seven Dials, I came face to face with one of my so-called successful operations. There he was, his mind destroyed by shock and pain. A fine tribute to my skill. I tell you, Jonathan, I can't rest until we find some way to rid surgery of such horrors. But, Father, your dream of lulling people into unconsciousness, there's nothing new about that. People have been trying to find a way for centuries. Even so, I'm determined through my experiments to find that way. It just isn't possible. Perhaps Blount was right. Perhaps pain and the knife are inseparable. Don't tell me you believe such wicked nonsense. But we only know of one way to reduce the agony. Operate quickly. And, Father, you have a sureness and a speed unmatched by anyone. Why waste your time with these foolish experiments? How dare you say I'm wasting my time? Because now you stop, know as well as both I... of you. But I don't understand how two of you can be so stubborn. I'm sorry, Father. It's all right, Jonathan. But I am making progress. One of these days, I'm going to surprise you both. And we're going to help you in every way that we can. Of course we are. I must get back to the hospital. Can't you stay for a little while? No, I'm sorry, Susan. I can't. I'm on call tonight. Well, we won't delay you. Don't be late. I've asked Cook to fix you a hamper. Mm, why? Don't you think they feed me properly at the hospital? I'm sure they don't. And I think it's a shame they make you live on the hospital grounds. Well, I hope very soon I'll be qualified as a surgeon. Then I can live where I please. Good night, Father. Good night, Jonathan. Good night, my dear. There's a cold chicken and one of Cook's game pies. Do you really expect me to walk through the streets carrying this thing? Go on, you ungrateful wretch. You know, Susan, keeping house for my father suits you. You're looking very lovely. Thank you, sir. experiment will test the properties of a strange gas prepared with nitric acid and granulated zinc.
frighten me laughing like that? Uh, I wasn't dreaming. I've been working. <laughs> I'm not dreaming. You've cut your hand. Look at it. Look at it. You slashed it on the glass. I was here. I saw you. Didn't you know? Didn't you feel it? No. No. Uncle, you've done it. You didn't feel it. You've done it. Uncle, you didn't feel any pain. But why shouldn't it succeed? I've performed a dozen experiments since the night I gashed my hand. It, it's all here, and it works, I tell you, it works. Uh, well, Tom, the idea is certainly a novel one. When can I give a demonstration? Uh, well, permission from the chairman and the house committee would have to be obtained. Uh, and then there's the question of a patient. I have my man already picked out. Uh-huh, I see. And uh, he has agreed to take the risk? Risk? There's no risk, providing the patient's heart and lungs are sound. Well, I'll put your request before the committee. Point out to them what it would mean to the hospital to be able to say that the first operation without pain was performed within these walls. Oh, no, look, Tom. Are you sure you're ready for a demonstration? I know I am. And, Charles, it would be a crime to let that agony go on a day, an hour longer than necessary. Well, it's your reputation that's at stake and not mine. Let's hope your optimism is justified. Well, now, if the committee agrees, uh, shall we say Monday week at three o'clock? Good. Uh, I'll be ready. <laughs> Mr. Donovan, uh, may I present our chairman? Uh, Mr. Donovan's from Guy's Hospital. How and do, uh, this is Mr. Hamilton from the London. How do you do? How do you? What? Bolton's late. <laughs> Maybe he's put himself to sleep. Careful with it, Peter. Uncle, I, I hope all goes well. Of course it will, my dear. Look how many times I've tested my patient. Good luck. Thank you, Susan. Father, I have some bad news for you. Your patient's dead. What? What happened? Sudden stroke. You can't go through with this now, Father. You'll have to cancel the demonstration. Have people say I was afraid to put my theory to the test? Certainly not. We must find another patient. But you can't possibly... We must. You, you. What's wrong with your arm? Abscess gum. It's something terrible. Come with me. What are you going to do? Cut it? It's all right. You won't feel a thing. All right, Jonathan. Come on, you'll be all right. Where are we going? There. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I must apologize for being late. Ah, uh, Mr. Bolton, I understand you have something new to show to us. Be so good as to explain to these gentlemen what it is you're going to demonstrate. Thank you, sir. Good luck, Tom. Uh. All right, Jonathan. Come on. Cheers. All right. Well, now, gentlemen, by using this special formula, which contains nitrous oxide, and which I will administer through this inhalator, I propose to render the patient insensible. <laughs> They'll operate upon his arm, and he'll not feel the slightest pain. Uh, 
No straps will be necessary. All right, it's all right. Okay. Hold that between your teeth. Now, breathe deeply. Deeper. Order, <laughs> gentlemen, please. Proceed with your demonstration now, Mr. Bolton. Your patient is unconscious. <laughs> didn't put the man to sleep. The whole thing was like a circus. Thank you, Peter. In spite of today's failure, I am convinced that the answer to painless surgery now lies within my grasp. For a few vital seconds, the patient was completely oblivious to the pain of the knife. However, the formula must be strengthened. 
so that the patient remains unconscious until the operation is completed. Tonight, I propose to conduct a further experiment on myself, this time using a much stronger formula containing danger of opium. Unexpected pleasure. <laughs> Where is he? I must find him. The hospital should have let me know. Now, now, Doctor, take it easy there. <laughs> By the looks of it, you've been making a night of it, eh? <laughs> the one legged man. Where is he? I must help him. Sent him away for a nice long rest, haven't we, Joe? That's right, Governor. He's nice and peaceful now. Now they all staring for. Strike up there. <laughs> Come on, Doctor. <laughs> Come and sit down, eh? <laughs> Well, it's nice to see you here again, Doctor, eh? <laughs> Have a little drop of this. It'll probably do you good, eh? No, no, no I don't want anything. <laughs> the one-legged man. This is the one I came to see. Where is he? 
Where is he? I go. Well, I'll feel it quite myself. Yeah, perhaps you're right. By the looks of things, you have had a bit too much. I can't help it. I must get back. I shouldn't be. I must get back. Oh, well. <laughs> we'll see you home safe and sound. Won't we, Ned? Don't worry, gal. <laughs> I take care of him, all right. Come on, sir. Come on. Come on. I'll take care of him. Ben wants you downstairs. He'll be all right, Jim. Nice and comfortable. Dear, you were down here. Uncle, have you been up all night? Six hours. I've been trying a new formula. It works. I seem to have had a dream, a strange dream. But it's all so vague. You look so tired. Come and have some breakfast. Later, Susan, later. I must make some notes first. That's odd. Can't find my notebook. Right here. Well, it can't be far away. Don't worry, Ellen. I'll find it after breakfast. Uncle, do you really think you should go to the hospital? Today? Why, of course. In any case, I have to arrange for a further demonstration. All right, but have your breakfast first. Come on. Uh, uh. I thought there was something funny going on. He's been experimenting on himself, taking gas. It's all here. Experiment one, right up to experiment 53. Do you think he'll be back? Don't worry. He'll be back. But how can you be sure of it? <laughs> you mark my words. When he finds his precious notebook is missing, he'll come crawling. And when he does, we'll be ready. fool around with him. Someday you'll wiggle that bottom of yours just once too often. Come on, Rachel. We've got work to do. Yesterday we were privileged to witness the dismal failure of Mr. Bolton's demonstration. But let us not be too disappointed, gentlemen. It was bound to fail. Ever since surgery began, man's destiny has been to suffer in order that he might be cured. And no one can change that, gentlemen. Not even Mr. Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> now let us get on with our work. Mr. Williams, will you be so good as to demonstrate upon this cadaver as to how you would propose to cut through the radius and ulna? Oh, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Bolton. How fortunate. The superintendent said I could have a word with you before the committee meeting. 
Very well, Mr. Bolton. I've made startling progress, and I'm most anxious to set the date for another, and this time, successful demonstration. I'm sorry, Mr. Bolton. That is a matter for the committee to decide. Precisely what I wanted to talk to you about. I wonder if my request could be put forward on today's agenda. After what happened, I do not think this is the proper time to broach the subject, either to me or to the committee. However, I suggest you speak to the secretary. Excuse me, gentlemen. Time to open the meeting, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Oh, be so good as to instruct Mr. Bolton when it will be convenient for the committee to discuss the advisability... Advisability? The advisability of his conducting a further demonstration of his painless operation technique. But, of course, Mr. Bolton, at your service. I thought perhaps this morning... Not today, Mr. Bolton, please. Um, perhaps if you would look in at my office tomorrow or the next day. It's time that I join the others, Mr. Bolton. Well, really, I must uh, insist that you, I get a better hearing. This is a disaster. That notebook contains the details of every experiment I've ever made. Without it, I'm lost. We've ransacked the house from top to bottom. It's nowhere to be found. But, Susan, the committee won't allow me another demonstration without those records. It must be somewhere. Perhaps if you could get a good night's sleep, you'd remember where you left it. Perhaps, perhaps. Well, you go to bed. I'll deal with it. Good night, Uncle. Where are those proportions? With a pint of ale. He likes his food, he likes his song, he likes the women to think he's strong.
a perky hat Sits a girl who holds a skinny brat She looks at him when she feels sad It reminds her of good times she's had But he never cries or makes a ding Cause she fills his bottle with lovely gin Looking for this, Doctor? It's my notebook. It was stolen from me. <laughs> Not so fast, Doctor. <laughs> please, please. Ah. No, no, don't destroy it. I must have it back. You hear that, Rachel? The Doctor wants his book back. <laughs> All right, Doctor. You can have it back. But you'll have to sign a little bit of paper for it. Won't he, Joe? Sign? Take him upstairs, Joe. Jig. Let's have some life. What are they going to do to you? You keep your nose out of what doesn't concern you. Go on, get back to the customers. For his hand. That's all. It's like I said, Doctor. You can have your precious notebook. All you have to do is to sign this death certificate. It's already filled in, neat and proper. I can't sign that. I don't know how he died. You're getting too particular, Doctor. It's a favor for a favor, Doctor. You want your book? Hospitals want bodies. They pay us well, eh, Rachel? He died peaceful, Governor. Come on, Doctor. Sign the paper. It's as Ben says. A favor for a favor. No harm done. Go ahead, Governor. You'd better make up your mind, Doctor. No certificate? No notebook? No notebook, Doctor. experiments as I inhale. My whole being is stimulated for a short time. And then as I continue, I experience the strangest and most evil dreams, but try as I may upon awakening, I cannot remember them. And there are times when my memory fails me completely. This notebook, which I thought that I had lost, was actually in the pocket of my cape all the time. Uncle, your breakfast. It'll be cold. Why, you found your notebook. Yes, my dear. It was in the pocket of my jacket after all. Must be getting absent-minded. Now that proves you're overworking. Nonsense, I'm all right. Well, you won't be able to work this evening at any rate. Why not? Uncle, you are getting absent-minded. You invited Superintendent and Mrs. Matheson to dinner. To tell you the truth, I had forgotten. Aren't you doing yourself serious harm by inhaling these gases? Oh, Susan, I'm so close to success. You wouldn't want me to stop now, would you? Oh. 
Morning, Baker. Morning, sir. I'd like to collect this list of chemicals after I've finished operating. Yes, sir. 20 ounces tincture of opium, 50 ounces of vitriol, 100 grains laudanum. I'm afraid I haven't got those quantities on my shelves, Mr. Bolton. Why not? You know my requirements are heavy. You should keep your supply up. I wish you'd explain that to the committee, Mr. Bolton. They've instructed me to economize. Those chemicals are essential for my experiments. If there's any question, tell the committee that I will accept full responsibility. Very well, sir, if you say so. I know you've finished operating, but there's a child here you ought to look at. What's wrong? It's her foot. Her mother says you examined her at the dispensary at the Seven Dials. Doctor, all of a sudden it seemed to get worse. I thought I'd better bring out his study. Why the devil didn't you keep her off her feet? I warned you. We needed the money real bad. I brought her as soon as I could. This child has been in agony for days. The foot's badly infected. We'll have to operate. Of course. Come on, let me tell you. a very good chance of recovery. Oh, I know, I know, but speed has always been the essence of your father's skill. I wonder what can be keeping your uncle. It's unlike him to be so late. Oh, I expect he's been delayed at the glass foundry. It's, he's probably forgotten all about the time. Don't you think your father's becoming too absorbed in those experiments of his? Well, he has been working much harder since his demonstration failed. He was hoping that would prove something. Uh, well, maybe that accounts for his not being himself. Is he still carrying out those experiments on himself? Yes. 
Yes, I'm afraid he is. Oh, but surely that must be affecting his health. Oh, my dear Mrs. Matheson, how nice to see you. Oh, well, well, Tom. Charles, my dear fellow, I apologise for being late. I must say, Mr. Bolton, you missed an excellent dinner. I went to the glass foundry to pick up the new inhalator, a much improved design that will def... <laughs> Jonathan, my dear fellow, more brandy for Dr. Matheson. What a poor host you are. And here are those reports that you insisted I make out for the committee. Now, I want them in their hands first thing in the morning. I will, uh... <clears throat> Uh, don't you think it might be a good idea if you took a holiday before continuing your researches? Nonsense. I'm perfectly well. Never felt better in my oh, life. Believe me, but there's Thomas, not there's... that much time to waste. Now, please prepare a demonstration as soon as possible. Oh, don't press me too hard, Thomas. You'll destroy all you're trying to do if you don't learn to control your impatience. Please, Charles, don't bully Mr. Bolton. Uh, Mr. Bolton, tell us something of what it is that you're trying to do. That is, if you think that we're capable of understanding. You doctors fill your conversation with such technicalities that, of course, we do find it rather difficult. Such a delightful evening. I always admire this house so much. Well, good, good night, night Susan. Susan, dear, and thanks for a pleasant evening. Good night, and good night Tom. Good night, Charles. Good of you to come. Good night, my dear. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Uncle. Sleep well. I will, my dear, I will. I think your father's taking our advice. It's the first time in weeks he's gone to bed early. Now, if we could only persuade him to go away for a while. I think you could persuade anybody to do anything. Father. Father. Father, I don't think you should operate today. I'll be all right as soon as I start working. I am a little tired, of course. If you could only see yourself, you're a sick man, Father. We're ready for you, Mr. Bolton. murder. I saw it with my own eyes. The man's a danger to the public. Nobody's safe while he has a knife in his hand. He's gone to pieces. Mr. Bolton has been overworking. That's obvious. He, he needs a holiday. Holiday? Why not suspend him altogether? Yes, the chairman is right. After today's exhibition, the whole of London will know that Bolton is finished. You know what hospital gossip is like. News of this kind travels fast. But you can't dismiss a man like Bolton with a snap of the fingers. Sir, please, will you let me handle this? Sent for me, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Tom. 
we think you're ill. We uh, want you to give up your duties at the hospital for a time. Perhaps you're right. Seems I can't control my hands anymore. Oh, Thomas, you're one of the finest surgeons we have. We don't want to lose you. Now, why don't you take that holiday we talked about? Forget your experiments for a while. Forget my experiments? But that's impossible. I'm ready for my next demonstration. Mr. Bolton, the committee have decided against holding any further demonstrations. Well, Charles, have you lost faith in me too? The decision is for your own good. I tell you, you can't stop me. Operations without pain are possible, and I'll not rest until I prove it to you. To all of you. Oh, Baker. I'm going away for a while. I'll need this list of chemicals. Certainly, Mr. Bolton. If you'll be so good as to leave it with me, I'll see that you have your supplies as usual. When you return from your holidays. I must take them with me. I'm sorry, sir, but those are the committee's instructions. Good day, Mr. Bolton. He's been there for hours. What's happened? He's been suspended from the hospital. What? I'll explain to you later. I've got to talk to him. Father. Father, it's Jonathan. and tell me what happened in the chairman's office. I'm sorry, Father. Is the patient all right? Yes. Oh, God. Well, I'm finished as a surgeon. Good thing you were there to carry on. Father, don't talk like that. Well, at least it sets me free to concentrate on my work here. I suppose it's no use trying to convince you that these experiments can only lead to further disaster. Oh, but you're so wrong, my boy. Look, I'm convinced that I have here the formula that will lead to painless surgery there. Jonathan, I need your help. The hospital won't give me any more supplies. Look, look here. That's all that I have left. Father. Can't you realize the hospital stopped you for your own good? Yeah, but that's the only place that has these chemicals. Weeks ago, I ordered them specially. Why won't you face the truth? Father, you've become addicted to these inhalations. They're affecting your mind and your body. I never thought a son of mine would turn against me. Father, I'm only... Get out!
believe I must have those chemicals. <laughs> a bargain's a bargain, eh, Doctor? You keep your end of it, and I'll keep mine. You just sign these certificates as they are. We'll fill the rest in later, eh, Joe? Are you sure you'll help me? Oh, come, come, Doctor. Black Ben's a man of his word. Like I said, a bargain's a bargain. What are you doing here, sir? There was no need for that. What are you doing here? You're in Black Ben's, Doctor. <laughs> Morning, Doctor. <laughs> Just in time for a bite to eat. Go on, Doctor. Sit down. I'll get you something. Go ahead, Doctor. Sit down. Why am I here? What happened? You hear that, Rachel? <laughs> the Doctor don't remember. <laughs> Go on, Doctor. Help yourself. Some hot food in your stomach will do you good. Maybe this will refresh your memory. Good morning, Captain. Evans, the night porter. Oh, no. Let's get to the hospital at once. If I was in your shoes, Doctor, I'd lie low for a bit. Ben, hmm? the police were snooping around the doctor's dispensary. Asking for him. Like I said, Doctor, you'd better keep out of sight. You can rest easy here. There's none better than Ned the Crow for spotting the peelers. <laughs> after all, if you look after us, we got to look after you. Eh, hey, Jan? As far as the police know, poor Evans was knocked down from behind and then stabbed to death. What kind of chemicals were stolen? We won't know that until after the dispenser checks his inventory. But I fear the worst. If we only knew where he was, if, if we could just talk to him. I should never have left here last night. It can't be true. It just can't be. Begging your pardon, Miss Susan, there's an Inspector Donovan here. He'd like a word with you. Show the Inspector in, Ellen. Thank you. Forgive me if I intrude, but I was hoping to talk to Mr. Bolton. I'm afraid he's out. I'm Jonathan Bolton. I assist my father. 
Can I help you, Inspector? Yes, perhaps you can. We wish to verify your father's signature on this death certificate. Yes, that's his signature. You will notice that the handwriting above differs from the signature. I wonder if you recognize it. No, I'm, I'm afraid I don't. I've, I've never seen it before. Can you tell us what this is all about, Inspector? We have reason to believe that Mr. Bolton has somehow been tricked into signing false death certificates. Are you sure of that? Quite sure. Well, I've taken up enough of your time. Please tell Mr. Bolton that it is essential that we speak to him as soon as possible. Thank you. Good day. I'll see you out, Inspector. <laughs> Conscience, I guess. He'll only give us trouble. We ought to get rid of him. the most terrible crimes. I cannot resist the craving for another inhalation. I don't think we should wait any longer to question Mr. Bolton. You say he hasn't returned home? There's no trace of him anywhere. Of course, you realize, Donovan, without corroborating information from Mr. Bolton, we have very little evidence to support this raid of yours. But these people have disappeared from the Seven Dials. And Mr. Blount has practically admitted that he's none too careful about how he gets his bodies for his anatomy classes. Black Ben's our man, sir. I'd stake my life on it. Very well, Donovan. We'll take along some good men. You'll get little welcome in the Seven Dials. Thank you, sir. with a nice hot run. You know, you're just on top of Black Ben's. The best lodging house in the Seven Dials. Come on. <laughs> Good work, Thompson. Now take a man through this alley. Round to the backyard. Keep well covered. Yes, sir.
He's outlived his welcome. He needs looking after. And he makes certain that what's left of him is found far enough away so as to have no connection with this place. No need to worry, Governor. It'll all be taken care of nice and tight. No need to be frightened, Governor. It's the Peters! Every man for himself! Come, this way, all of you. Go on, go on, get through that door. Go on away. Stand aside, Ben. Come on, Joe. Bolt it. Come on, up over the roof. It's best I finish it. Be quick! Inspector Donovan. Forgive me for what I did. I was too anxious to prove my feelings. But 
Jonathan. Somewhere within these pages lies the answer to painless surgery. I beg of you to carry on. Prove I failed to prove that pain and the night can be separated. I will, Father. I promise you. I'll see that nothing stands in his way.